everything we look at, every page we turn, review it, and if the colour's not on the page, we see it in our mind's eye. The colour is extraordinary. Our connection with colour is, is not conscious. You know, we don't have a conscious link to the way how we react to the color. It's something that happens to us all the time. It's a part of our brain, you know, that is similar to breathing, you know, like or like a feeling hungry or something like that. It's something that happens automatically all the time. My name is Dado Valentik and I'm a colorist and a color scientist. But the reason why I got involved with color was almost an accident. Many years ago when I was working as an engineer for Apple, I entered a color grading theater and when I saw that and then when I saw what's happening inside I just felt really strongly that this is really what I want to be doing. The reason why I felt so strongly that I had that connection could be to do with the condition that I was born with which is called synesthesia which helps me feel a little emotion or, or, or almost smell or taste or hear color and that has helped me you know to understand that what I call how humans are hardwired to, to perceive color and understand color and feel what color is going to do to them. A colorist can make a car appear more expensive or more desirable, a dress more beautiful, you know, or food just more tasty, you know, by affecting the way how the colors are going to be perceived, you know, by the viewer. In filmmaking, we don't use real colors anymore. We use colors that, you know, could, you know, help us spark our imagination, help us connect with a certain emotion, help us connect with certain memory, help us, you know, transpond us into certain time or space. My job is really to look at the image, to understand emotion in it and affect it and control it so that the viewer has got access to the same emotion that the director had in the first place when they created that image. Yes, great. So welcome to the IBC, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the show as much as everything that's happening outside of the show. Uh, Amsterdam is certainly a lovely city to enjoy. Uh, so I hope you're not feeling too fragile this morning after the weekend. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about uh, a new color workflow or what we did to make uh, the whole workflow with color a little bit better. Um, we are finding ourselves in a little transition in the post-production industry. I actually, I just come back from New York where I'm working on a, on a series uh, for Netflix that is going to be the first HDR series. And the images that I have been seeing on that HDR monitors are, are such that I have never seen before in my life. So certainly technology is allowing us to create even more beautiful, more colorful, even more real life images than ever before. Um, so the, our responsibility and, and our ability to manipulate those images is now better than ever before. Color grading has evolved a lot. I mean, we can now like use all sorts of different applications, plugins, and stuff like this to affect the color, and we can do it better than ever. But I think one thing that we completely forget or ignore, because we kind of got lost completely in this technology world, is why is it that we are actually changing color? Why is it that we are affecting the color? And I think this is really what I would like to you know, help you understand a little bit with this presentation. Actually, there is no such a thing as a good or a bad look. You know? There is one infinite amount of looks out there, and um, there is nothing that we can say, hey, it's a bad look. It, every look and every color comes from the light, and light is energy, and energy is real. It's always around us. But what all we can say is that there is only the best look for that particular moment, for that particular scene that is going to tell the particular story and emotion that we are trying to say. So in our work today, what we have been doing is that we have been working in a, in a, in a way that, that we would go and film something and we would process this footage, then we would go and end up with that footage at the end in the grading suite. And only then we would start thinking about color. We would start paying a little bit more attention to it. However, what's happened in the last few years at this time that we had 
to spend in a grading suite has kind of been reduced. So we are getting less and less time, less budget. On the other end, the demand for us colorists has risen because we have to deliver more and more masters. When we first started, all we had to do is create a 35 millimeter master. Now we have about 10 different versions of masters that we have to deliver in shorter amount of time. So we had to go and look for the way how we're going to improve this workflow. And um, what I'd like to use as an example for that is a movie that um, I just finished earlier this year that got released in August. Uh, it was done uh, by uh, uh, Monty Python. And uh, it features uh, Simon Pegg and Kate Beckinsale. It's an actually a story of a guy who um, lives just an ordinary life. And then he gets given by this kind of alien council. It was written and directed by Terry Jones. So you have to understand, it's a very Monty Python type of comedy. So he gets like a given by uh, like an alien council, um, an ability to do anything, absolutely anything. And uh, he falls in love with Kate and so on. So the challenge for me was following. Terry and uh, his cinematographer, Peter Hannon, were people who used to make films on film. And actually, Peter made his first film the year when I was born. So you see, there, there was like a lot of like a disconnect in that. When they saw the image of Ari Alexa in the Rec 709, they just felt, we don't like it. It's too digital. So the first thing for me is to make that camera look more film-like. The second challenge we had is that we actually had like a three underlining story. So there is this story of a guy who lives a normal life, you know, then there's a layer of a story where he gets all these powers, and then the top story is this kind of totally crazy world of alien counsel. So the way how we helped tell that story or, or create this transition from one world to another is by using the color. So what we did differently is following. We actually introduced color already in the pre-production stage. So we actually went and shot some tests. We graded those tests and developed looks already at the beginning, before the movie started shooting. So we had the full color implemented on every shot. So while they were shooting, they were implementing our looks. When we were processing that material, we were implementing looks in the processing of the material. When it came to editing, editor had material that looked very close to the final graded master. So they knew exactly if the cut's going to work. The sales agent was able to implement offline cut to sell the movie around the world and so on, because they had a movie that was looking very close to the finished result. And then when it came to me for the color grading, I did not just conform to the raw material, I actually have conformed to the color metadata. So my timeline looked so that the whole movie had actually all the color decisions applied to it. So the time I had to spend in the grading suite was not to invent the look anymore. I was actually paying attention to the more important stuff, is how to make it look better, how to match scenes better, how to you know, fix some issues, how to get paid more attention to the detail, and so on and so on and so on. Leading to ultimately much better result, and because that we were working in a color managed workflow, the outputs that we had to create, all the different masters, were really more automated and quicker to do. So the first question you probably ask yourself, OK, so how did you do it? Or what is that look? Or how do you create it? So the easiest way for me to explain it to you is following. Imagine this is a signal you get from a camera. So this is a, like a signal from Alexa RAW that you would see on your monitor. It's a, like a log C image. So imagine you go and you put glasses on. And you look through those glasses, and you then get to see a certain color. Well, look is nothing else but that. It's basically just an image that you get when you put glasses on. Nothing changes with the file itself. File stays untouched. It's only the way how we're interpreting it and what we see it, how we see it. And the beautiful thing is today, technology allows us to apply to put these glasses on in a different way in real time apply different looks without any rendering, without anything. So we are able to affect these images as we go and tweak this metadata as we go. And there are just the very small files that get applied on top of an image. So 
what is really look is it from the technical aspect, this kind of glasses, but what really look does for us is actually, this is that secret link that I explained at the beginning between the emotion, the story, and how we're going to pass that emotion on to a viewer. This is really what's happening. And the way how we achieve this is by creating a certain color palette, or that color palette that's going to give us a certain feel, a story, a, 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 a something you know, that we're going to connect with it. So let's say in this particular scene, uh, Simon Peck decided he wanted to become a president of the United States. So we had to go and create an atmosphere of him being a president. So what we decided to do is to go for this color palette. So basically, this is like a, you know, very cold, you know, very blue government, you know, dark, contrasty look, you know, with some grayish scales. So when we apply that color palette to an image, this is the result we got. Very much like, you know, action movie like a Jason Bourne or something like that, you would imagine. On the other side, for example, if we had a, a scene like this where he just woke up, and it's a rainy day in London, and he said, hey, let it be weather like in Los Angeles. So we had to go and you know, turn this world you know, into something more warmer and something sunny, but still keep in mind that we are in London. So we went for like a, this pastel kind of warmer color palette. The result we got was this. So basically, by understanding you know, how and what palette we are going to use and you know, combining that with a story, we are able to improve and tell the story further. Now, how do you create this palette? Or how do you come up with this palette? Or what do you do to develop the right palette? In a way, it's done like this. You take different color transformations. You know, this could be your primary color correction. This could be your you know, curves, this could be your, you know, mathematical matrices, whatever, you put them together and you combine them into one file that we call 3D lookup table or dot look file or dot cube file. And basically that combined has got that information inside. This process was very easy for us colorists because we have been trained and have spent years doing and operating that equipment and we understand you know, how to operate it and how to come up with those looks. However, I must admit that there is a, always a little disconnect between human and technology and how we interact with it. What I would like to show you is something that's new and that's different and I'm actually really proud to say that this is probably the first time I'm presenting and, and, and you know, showing an iPhone application that I'm using in professional color grading workflow. And it's called uh, actually Adobe Hue. And if you were to just to switch quickly to my phone, I'm going to show you a little bit how it works. So for example, I can go and pick up you know, this lovely sunset. Why not? So you see what happens, these dots that you see, they are actually sampling the color palette of this image. Now, you have to take it like this. It is not like mathematically, you know, like accurate sampling. It's not like what I call the German way of looking at things. It's more like a Californian style where you relaxed a little bit about it and you kind of more interpret the atmosphere of an image. All right? So what you do then is by choosing one of these dots now, okay, I can choose the main hue, the main feel for the color that I want, and the other palette then plays along with it for me. So, and with this slider here, I can decide how strong I want this effect to be. And these images on top are effectively just some images that I have loaded that I can then use to see how strong I want this image to be. So you see, this is like, for example, no effect, and this is like a nice and warm effect. Or what's really interesting as well, by the way, you can also load it on a video footage, and you can see how it would look like. And I can go and say, OK, this is like roughly the look that I want. I feel it's correct. You press on the green button. You say, sunrise. Yeah, we're in a morning mood. So let's go, sunrise. We'll save it. And then what happens, this image goes into my library. So now we're going to go back to my desktop. So for example, let's say this is the shot that I, that I showed you earlier. So what I can do now is I can go onto an input LUT. And here, I can go and select 
um, like for example, some looks that I have saved before. So this is like one that I have created, which is called uh, Fuji, let's have a look, Ari Kodak. Let's try for that one. So this is basically a profile that gives me a very nice uh, feel of how like a, a, a Kodak film stock would normally respond to an Ari Alexa. And then what I can do further, I can go into my like a creative looks and I can choose one of them that are already there. And then like for example, this kind of blue gold, why not? We can go for this one. And then I can change the intensity of that look. And now I am able to effectively get this particular look for this shot kind of sorted. Maybe I need a little bit less contrast. So what I can do there is I can go and correct my blacks a little bit so I don't have such a strong contrast. There we go. So now I have this look. Now, if I'm happy with this look, I think, okay, I think this is really what I like. I can go and click on this button here and export this still frame. And I can say, hey, listen, this is uh, Peter for reference. And then Peter can get this little JPEG file on, on his phone or an iPad and can tell me, yeah, I like this. And if he approves this look, I can click here. And then I can just go and export it as a .cube file, which is a file that is compatible, for example, with many cameras or with live grading equipment or with DaVinci Resolve. Then he can load it into his system. And then he's able then to see this image live. Or I can then take that metadata of that file and load it later on for the final grading. So this is basically how you can then use this kind of simple, like you know, Adobe Hue color decisions to help you come to uh, much nicer palettes and maybe a little bit more in an intuitive way than just by using the controls, the three-way color correctors, and so on. And again, we're going to go export this look, export this metadata that we can then use later throughout the production. I think the best thing now is for me to show you what we have achieved by doing this workflow. If you see very quickly the trailer for the film, and you're going to see what the end result was. By the power invested in me by the Intergalactic Council, I hereby pronounce a destruction order on the planet Earth. The usual test, Kylie. One Earthling will be picked at random. To prove he can use absolute power for good. But if he uses it for evil, the Earth will be eliminated. If there was one thing you could do, it would change your life for the better. Oh, that's easy. I would be able to see Catherine from downstairs. <laughs> I can make things happen. Clothes? Get dressed on me. All I have to do is wave my hand. <laughs> Dennis, be able to speak. Biscuits. What? Biscuits. Please, please, please. Nothing else matters. Come to think of it, I wouldn't mind shagging your leg right now. I could solve every problem in the world. Have you thought this thing through? Dog mask, clean yourself up. He has no idea of doing any good whatsoever. Let me have a really great body. And a really big... Oh, ow! It's not that big, obviously! I was being selfish. I could have made people happy. Let everyone who died be alive again. Ah! Not everyone who died ever! Are you crazy? Me be President of the United States. Are the briefing papers for Syria, the deficit, Israel in the Middle East? Jesus! Just pretend to be a dumb animal again. I love you, Neil! Shut up, Dennis! Shag her, Neil! Give me the body of a great man. That would be really all for me for today. Um, all I want to say is, you know, happy coloring, everybody. Enjoy it. Um, also, if you are interested in um, learning a little bit more about this process of color managed workflow, of different looks, how to build the lots, and so on, we are building a resource for anybody who's interested in that. It's called Color is Beautiful, and it's going to open in October. So maybe you have a little like a preview that you can take on it now. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>